Hi everyone, welcome to the Ask Dr. Lynn Show where I do my best in answering questions from industrial bakers. Many of you come to bakerpedia.com daily to seek solutions for your technical issues. So thank you for joining me today. I am Dr. Lynn from Bakerpedia, the world's largest resource for technical baking information. Have a baking question? Bakerpedia it. Still haven't solved all your questions? Place any comments on the topics that you're researching on Bakerpedia and I'll do my best on this show to answer them. Well, bakers, here goes. There are two kinds of frozen bread that this viewer is asking about. One is the frozen dough. The other is the frozen parbake bread. In the latter, ascorbic acid has no function on its quality for storage. For frozen dough, you will see the same effect that ascorbic acid has on fresh dough quality, which is the following. Ascorbic acid will improve cell structure, improve product volume, and therefore improve crumb softness. Ascorbic acid doesn't act on the protein directly. It first oxidizes to dehydroascorbic acid or DHAA at the beginning of the kneading process. And together with ascorbate oxidase, an enzyme found in the flour, the DHAA works on converting the glutathione to glutathione disulfide, which prevents the softening effect of glutathione. This anti-softening effect of ascorbic acid is what makes it look like it has a strengthening effect. Ascorbic acid works best in short fermented products up to two hours. Therefore, a straight fast dough is recommended for frozen doughs using ascorbic acid. It needs to be flash frozen and packaged properly so that there will be limited impact on the ascorbic acid. Because ascorbic acid is sensitive to temperature fluctuations and freezer burns, which are oxidation, it may lose its effect over time if there are freeze-thaw cycles during storage and distribution. The best is to keep the frozen dough as stable as possible for the ascorbic acid to work optimally. You may also use other oxidizers like glucose oxidase or potassium bromate to improve the oxidation tolerance of frozen dough. Levels are recommended at 20 ppm. This means that you will need two grams of ascorbic acid in 100 kilos of flour. That's recommended. You may think that your dough may perform better with more ascorbic acid, but don't be fooled. An overdosage of ascorbic acid would also soften the dough. Sourdough is becoming one of the biggest trends in the US because many bread customers are looking for a bread that's easier to digest. Studies have shown that sourdough fermentation reduces FODMAPs and amylase trypsin inhibitors, which may cause inflammation in certain people. The protein degradation of glutenin proteins in long sourdoughs may also be a contributor to this type of bread providing a better digestion. In summary, sourdough has the following benefits. A cleaner label. Most sourdough bread has just flour, water, and salt on its ingredient label. How are they able to do this? Well, through the process of extended fermentation, very frequently, this improves gluten strength and dough machinability, and it makes the sourdough not require any other kind of dough improvers. Higher hydration. A moister bread crumb that improves the baker's yield. Improved flavor. The long fermentation results in the production of beneficial alcoholic compounds that give sourdough bread its unique flavor and tang. No added sugars. Due to the deep aromas and tang of sourdough, 
sugars are usually left out of formulas. Lower calorie count. Because of the lack of sugar and a decrease in fat as compared to most white bread formulas, the typical white sourdough loaf will have significantly fewer calories. These questions concern the staling of bread. Go to our staling page and see what you can do to delay staling. Sometimes an enzyme can solve your dry mouthfeel issue. It is not possible by the chemical makeup of acetic acid and Calpro that these ingredients would increase staling or dryness. Sometimes it's because you are over baking your bread too much. So watch that baking cycle. And how do you know if you're baking optimally? Go to our thermal profiling page and use a thermal logger to determine your bake. Targeting anything 85% and above will give you a moister bread with a softer chew. At 85% arrival, the information on this page would tell you that 15% of your thermal profile would be above the 200 degree Fahrenheit level. Therefore, acidic acid and CalPro doesn't dry up your bread, but overbaking your bread and having arrivals at 80% or less will. Well, that's all I have for today. Okay, do you have any more questions for me? You can leave them on the comments here on this page or bakerpedia.com topic pages. But hey, bakers, don't forget to check out Bakerpedia first, okay?